For Toki, the hand of fate remained inescapable. Rao, the conqueror, who rose again to prominence with the death of Souser. Rao, the eldest Hokuto brother, who clung fiercely to his ambition and his art. Rao, the man who once epitomized everything that Toki yearned for, had once told him, if I ever lose my way, you must seal my fists. The time to honor that promise had finally come. Toki instinctively made his way to the Hokuto Dojo, where the brothers had once shed so much sweat and so many tears. The final battle between blood brothers was about to begin. At last, their fates would be sealed. But no tears would fall from Toki's eyes. He would channel his sorrow into the power of his fists, just as Rao had once taught him. If only you weren't ill, Toki. It is time to sacrifice this diseased body. Kenshiro, I leave my soul to you. The final chapter, The Sacred Vow. Only one who has truly mastered his art can hope to defeat me. So you think Rao is at the Hokuto Dojo? All Hokuto practitioners share a sacred bond with the Dojo. I know Rao is there, waiting for Toki. All right, let's go. It's right around here, isn't it? We cannot enter the dojo without disarming the traps that protect it. First, we must activate the seven keystones. I bet you thought you weren't going to see Toki again, but no, here he is. This is his final chapter, and it's rather important to the story, so we couldn't afford to leave it out. It's a tiny bit difficult to rescue villagers with Toki, not because his attacks aren't powerful or anything like that, but because his signature moves are ass. That might be a bit of an overstatement. His signature moves are fine, but they're only meant to be used on single opponents. This level seems to have a lot less fighting and a lot more atmosphere than a lot of the other levels in the game, probably because it's for Toki. Toki's projectile aura blast is your best bet for taking out groups of enemies. It's almost as good as a signature move. At the very least, it's as good as Boulder Splitting Wave. But it's still no softness ripping slash. It should also be noted that Toki only gets three levels and this is his third, so you don't have much time to upgrade him at all. This is going to become especially painful when we have to fight Raoul, but we'll get to that when we get to that. You finally got to see the Celestial Hundred Crack Fist for its intended use. We're going to be using it a few more times. I said previously it was kind of useless, and that's not true, it's just almost useless. It does have its moments, though. It can be difficult to get the uh, the S rank at the end of the stage for signature move kills, even if you are leveled up a lot. Because that's just how things are with Toki. We should take this opportunity to talk about the ranking system in general, now that I think about it, because we haven't done that yet, have we? It's a very simplified ranking system in comparison to other action games. It's just number of people you killed, number of people you killed with signature moves, mission bonuses, and how much health you have left. Or rather, how much damage you took. How much health you have left does not affect the ranking, just how much damage you took. And if you're going through the game on normal mode without grinding the characters, it's going to be difficult to get the damage ranking to an S. Because you're going to take a lot of damage no matter what you do. Assuming you're a bit later into the game, I mean, the first few levels, not a big deal as far as damage is concerned. 
But it's a bit odd, because the only rank that actually refers to your skill in the ranking system is the damage rank. The others have nothing to do with skill. You can get a high number of kills no matter how much you suck at the game. And finding mission bonuses is as simple as looking in areas that you hadn't previously. You even have a map for that. The game offers to mitigate the challenge of the only ranking system that's actually difficult by asking you when you start the game up if you would like to start the difficulty on easy instead of normal. Unlike a lot of other Dynasty Warriors games where the difficulty setting isn't really a difficulty setting so much as a did you grind enough to get to this difficulty level without dying setting, in Ken's Rage the difficulty setting is actually a difficulty setting and normal difficulty is challenging because it's the normal difficulty. If you play on easy mode, a lot of the design in legend mode just flat out doesn't work or doesn't matter. And if you go through again on normal mode after easy mode, then you've leveled up too much for it to matter. It's weird that they bother designing things in such a specific way as to make them challenging, but then they activate systems that mitigate that challenge to the point that it might as well not be there. And again, I do think this is because this is technically a Dynasty Warriors title, and people are used to Dynasty Warriors titles being somewhat easy. Hey, watch out for the mines! One wrong step and you'll be toast! I think that's an overstatement, Bat. We'll be fine if we get hit by the mines. It may hurt a little bit, but we'll be okay. Either way, we just need to jump over them, no biggie. I don't know if the enemies can activate them. I've never even tried to find out. Are these things supposed to light up when you touch them? How come it's not working? Huh. Huh. Maybe your fingers are too fat and greasy. This is the perfect time to use the Celestial 100 Crack Fist again, so you can see simultaneously how useful and useless it is. It deals maybe one-third of a commander's health bar of damage. This would ordinarily be considered useless, but if you're trying to save your hyper signature move for something more important, then it works fine for that purpose. Where did you come from? Get him! It only took two Celestial Hundred Crack Fists to defeat that guy because, uh, our first one slammed him against the Keystone, which dealt him extra damage. I honestly completely forgot the time limit was even there. I'm not really sure in which situation it could be considered imposing, but there it is. The time limits seem like they would only be challenging to someone who is used to easier action games. But if you're used to easier action games, then you probably took the game's offer to choose the easy difficulty at the main menu. Oh, I almost forgot, the game also offers you to turn off the blood and gore. In case, you know, when you bought this M-rated game based on Fist of the North Star, you weren't expecting blood. You should have left when you had the chance. I wonder if there is someone who bought this game and turned the blood off. That seems like it would pertain to an incredibly small audience, but if there's one thing we've discussed thoroughly across this Let's Play, it's that this game is concerned with reaching as wide an audience as possible. Licensed Dynasty Warrior games after this seem to have gotten a bit more... separate from the actual Dynasty Warrior series than this one. Unfortunately, this one never got the same treatment again. There was Dynasty Warriors Gundam in 2007, which was quite different from normal Dynasty Warriors, but it was still close enough to the actual original formula that they didn't need to worry about anything. This one was actually kind of a big departure, even though it may not seem like it. There were small game system changes and improvements made to the AI for Dynasty Warriors Gundam, but nothing as notable as the changes made to Ken's Rage for the Legend Mode. That messed with the formula a bunch. Even though it may not seem like it to outsiders, trust me. And you can tell, even though they were very concerned with making a good product for the license, they were also concerned with being able to bring in their primary audience. And even though they went to great lengths to try and do that, it still wasn't enough. The game was criticized for being really slow and too unlike other Dynasty Warriors titles. And that's how Ken's Rage 2 happened. You, you'll pay for what you did to my men! 
We're tasked with facing three commanders at the same time here instead of just two. Toki is ahead of his time. Facing a whole three commanders with Toki, whose signature moves aren't exactly the greatest, may seem like a kind of a big deal. But if you remember how Rei and Kinshiro have a dodge function, Toki has something special. And we'll get to that when we're done pounding this poor man with a Celestial Hundred Crack Fist to wear down his health. We're very near the end of the level already, but that's because the boss fight for this level is one of the most difficult in the game. It's actually a tie as far as I'm concerned with the final boss in terms of difficulty. Alright, now that we've worn this fellow down just a little bit, it's time to show off Toki's special ability. Instead of dodging, Toki has the miraculous ability to counter his enemy's moves. Something we're going to see right now. When he counters them, he freezes his enemies in place and puts them in a state of Meridian Shock, where they are way more vulnerable. This is the easiest way to beat commanders and bosses, far easier than relying on signature moves. The timing for it, though, is on a delay. It's not an instant counter. So you have to account for the fact that the enemy has an animation startup, and so do you. Just like Ken's roll, you can make the counter move faster if you use it in the middle of one of your attacks, but that still doesn't make it instant or guarantee that it will work. Raul, I haven't forgotten my promise. I will seal your fists, come hell or high water. I knew it would come to this day. I must bear witness to my brother's fated. Huh, there's another one here. The keystones, once activated, link together to form the seven stars of Gandalf. Long ago, the Yukan, our master, once pushed Rao and I off this very cliff. I was injured, so Rao held me in one arm and climbed back up with the other. I know the final keystone is up here. Shall we begin? Any regrets? I chose this path myself. I have no doubts. Overcome me, then you needed to learn the Iron Fist of Cruelty. This battle is as good as over. The Iron Fist? But when did you? I swore that I would not use it until I fought you. Look to the sky! You should see it! The Star of Death! Oh! No! The Star of Death! 
above me as well. There is a legend handed down through the history of Hokuto Shinken. When two mighty warriors who are evenly matched fight, then above them both will shine the Star of Death. Come. This is fated to be your end. Rao! Alright, welcome to the tie for the hardest boss fight in the video game, also known as Oh My God, Why Are You Doing This To Me? Rao deals massive amounts of damage, and he has a lot of moves that can inflict Meridian Shock on you and make you attack slower and incapable of defense. It only takes one of those moves and then any other move from him and Toki's down. This is in combination with the fact that you have to be incredibly methodical in your fight with Raul if you want to succeed at all. In summary, this fight takes a long ass time and you can die in a couple of seconds. The first phase isn't so bad. It more or less gives you time to get used to the way the fight's going to go, by which I mean slowly. You do have to break Raul's block before you can hurt him, and the best way to do this is by jumping in the air and slicing at him. It breaks his block instantly, and if it doesn't knock him over, then he'll be vulnerable for a brief period. Your projectile attack also breaks his block, but you take too long to recover from it, so he's not vulnerable any longer. The strategy doesn't really change much as he gets more aggressive, except you want to press the R1 button immediately if you think he's going to use an attack. That way you can counter it. And if you're not successful at countering it, then you've just lost. There is, thankfully enough, a full health recovery, and some spirit lying around in crates. But in all honesty, that's the absolute least they could do for you. Still water is Still water is overcome the raging torrent. Sure. 
やこれ地検The secret of your iron fist. This. He pressed his own sick cocko. That vital point lets one use the iron fist for a limited time. But cruelly, it also drains one's own life at the same time. You are getting weaker by the moment, brother. You cannot defeat me. You knew I saw through you, and yet you fought on. You. You're crying. Raoul. But you gave up. 
your tears in favor of unbridled ambition. It's you, Toki. Even as you face certain death, you still kept trying to overcome me. You, my brother, brought the tears back to my parched soul. I have no regrets. Give me my final destiny. Farewell, my greatest adversary. Farewell, my beloved brother. This is it. The fist of your brother. The fist you try to overcome. Take care of yourself, Toki. Okay.